from the communication viewpoint which on which one of the following is a cultural institution so that's family now uh, a cultural institution refers to an established pattern of behavior or organization that is characteristic of a particular society or a community family is a cultural institution because it is a fundamental social unit that is universal across cultures and plays a central role in shaping social behavior and communication patterns families transmit cultural norms values and beliefs across generations and provide a context for socialization and learning communication within families also reflect cultural norms and values and can vary depend widely depending on factors such as gender age cultural background no trade organizations political parties and military alliances are not cultural institutions in the same sense as they are typically focused on specific activities or goals rather than on transmitting cultural norms and values while these organizations may reflect and may be influenced by a culture by cultural norms and values they are not themselves cultural institutions now the next question which one of the following is excluded from the list of communication barriers so which one of them is not a communication barrier physical barriers semantic barriers and psychological barriers these are the types of communication barriers but philosophical barriers are not a type of communication barrier the physical patterns these barriers are caused by the environment and can impede communication examples include noise distance visual of the uh, observations physical objects blocking the view of the speaker such as a pillar or a tree can make it difficult to see the body language the semantic barriers these barriers are caused by differences in language vocabulary and meaning examples include language differences jargon technical terms and specialized language used in certain fields can be difficult to understand for people who are not familiar with them slang words and phrases used informally in a particular social group or culture may be misunderstood by outsiders psychological barriers these barriers are caused by attitudes emotions and personality traits that can interfere with communication examples include prejudice preconceived opinions or biases based on factors such as race gender or religion can can create communication barriers then is defensiveness feeling threatened or defensive can cause someone to be resistant to new ideas or perspectives next is neg- negative emotions anger fear or anxiety can interfere with effective communication so this is done and then you have cultural and social barriers these barriers are caused by differences in values beliefs and assumptions based on factors such as age gender ethnicity religion and socio economic status examples include non verbal communication different cultures may have different norms and expectations for non verbal communication such as eye contact hand gestures and personal space taboos certain topics or behaviors may be considered taboo in some culture may be difficult to discuss them openly stereotypes stereotypes based on race gender or other factors can create communication barriers and lead to misunderstandings now which of the following are forms of traditional media of communication traditional media of communication so b c and d that is yakshagana puppetry and harikatha these are the forms of traditional media of communication yakshagan is a traditional dance drama from karnataka that has been in existence for centuries a form of theater that uses music dance dialogue and elaborate costumes to convey a message or story puppetry is another traditional form of entertainment that has been used for centuries to convey stories or messages involves the use of puppets made from various materials such as cloth wood which are controlled by puppeteers to perform various movements and actions to tell a story 
Next is Harikatha. Harikatha is a traditional form of storytelling that has been in use for centuries in India. Involves a narrator telling stories from Hindu mythology accompanied by music and song to convey a message or teach a moral lesson. Then is demonst- street demonstrations, a form of public uh, protest. So the uh, street demonstration is not a form of traditional communication. So uh, a form of public protest where a group of a uh, group of, of people march or gather in public place to raise awareness about a particular issue or cause. While street street demonstrations can be used as a form of communication, they are not traditional form of media and are not unique to any specific culture or community. Filmy dances refers to the dance performances in Indian films. While dance is a traditional form of communication in India and has been used in various forms of uh, traditional media such as classical dances, filmy dances are not considered a traditional form of media. They are a modern form of entertainment that has evolved with the Indian film industry and are not rooted in any particular cultural tradition. The next question, effective classroom communication is intended to make learners acquire new knowledge, behavior, and soft skills. Ways ways of aggressive attitude and hyper reaction it doesn't help uh, the effective classroom communication doesn't help acquire those knowledge behavior practice and apply what they have learned soft skills intended to help learners develop soft skills such as communication collaboration and problem solving can be achieved by using group activities role playing exercises and other interactive stages strategies that promote communication and teamwork. Now, ways of aggressive attitude. Aggressive attitudes are not intended outcomes of effective classroom communication. In fact, effective classroom communication should aim to promote positive attitudes and behaviors in learners such as respect, empathy, and open-mindedness. Hyperreactions are also not intended outcomes of effective classroom communication. Effective classroom communication should aim to create a positive and supportive learning environment that encourages learners to express their opinions and ideas with without fear or of judgment or ridicule. Clarity. Effective classroom communication should be clear and easily understandable. Teachers should use simple and concise language, avoid jargon, and provide examples and illustrations to help learners to understand complex concepts. Active listening. Effective classroom communication involves active listening by both the teachers and the learners. Teachers should pay attention to learner, learners' questions, feedback, and comments and respond in a timely and respectful manner. Two-way communication. Now, effective classroom communication should be a two-way process. Teachers should encourage learners to participate and share their ideas, opinions, and experiences. Learners should also be encouraged to ask questions and seek clarification. Nonverbal communication also involves um, nonverbal cues such as eye contact, facial expressions, and body language. Teachers should be aware of their nonverbal communication and use it to convey enthusiasm, interest, and engagement. Feedback. Effective classroom communication involves giving us uh, giving and receiving feedback. Teachers should provide constructive feedback to learners on their progress and encourage learners to give feedback on their teaching methods and materials. Use of technology. Effective classroom communication can also involve the use of technology such as multimedia presentations, online forums, and educational apps. Teachers should use technology in a way that enhances learning and engages learners. Inclusivity. Exclu- uh, effective classroom communication should be inclusive of all learners regardless of their background, culture, or learning style. Teachers should use diverse teaching materials, adapt their teaching methods to meet the needs of different learners and create a safe and respectful learning environment.
now uh, first statement interpersonal communication can be mediated or or mediated or unmediated mediated or unmediated maybe now on uh, on its part mostly mass communication need not to be mediated so one is true two is false one is correct but two is not correct so uh, the first statement interpersonal communication can be mediated or or mediated that's true as interpersonal communication can either can be either mediated or unmediated that's what i said now mediated communication refers to any form of communication that is carried out with the use of a medium like phone email social media or other electronic means in interpersonal communication this can include phone calls video conferencing or sending messages through social media platforms on the other hand unmediated communication refers to face to face communication that takes place when individuals in the same physical space this can include conversations on its part now the second on its part mostly mass communication need not be mediated it is false mass communication by definition involves the dissemination of information to a large audience through various media like television radio newspapers it is always mediated as it involves the use of a medium uh, to reach a large audience so uh, yeah large audience in in mass communication the sender of, of the message such as a news organization or advertiser uses a medium to transmit the message to a large number of receivers who may be geographically dispersed this message is not tailored to any individual receiver and the feedback from the receiver is limited now the next question the death penalty is in certain west the death penalty in certain the death penalty in certain western countries has led to increase in crime rate involving i'm sorry has led to an increase in the crime rate leading to greater number of inmates in their prison therefore death penalty is not justifiable which fallacy is committed in the above argu- argument that's the fallacy of false clause the false clause fallacy this is a type of fallacy where one assumes that because one event happened before another it must have caused it however correlation does not necessarily imply causation and there may be other factors that are responsible for the effect now the second given argument the argument that states that the death penalty in certain western countries has led to an increase in the in the crime rate which has resulted in a greater number of inmates in their prison the conclusion drawn from this is that the death penalty is not justifiable right uh, now assumption the argument assumes that there is a causal relationship between the death penalty and the increase in crime rate and the resulting increase in the number of inmates in prison however this assumption may not be true other contributing factors there could be other factors contributing to increase in crime rate and the number of inmates such as poverty lack of education unemployment and drug addiction the argument fails to provide evidence that the death penalty is the cause of the increase in crime rates and the resulting increase in the number of inmates now false clause fallacy the argument is based on a false clause fallacy which occurs when one assumes that because one event followed another the first event caused the second event without providing sufficient evidence to support the causal link now in summary the argument commits a false cause fallacy by assuming that the death penalty caused the increase in crime rate and the number of inmates without providing sufficient evidence to support this claim it ignores other factors that could have contributed to the increase in crime rates and the number of inmates straw man fallacy fallacy this fallacy occurs when someone misinterprets their opponent's argument in order to make it easier to attack they set up a straw man argument that is easy to knock down rather than 
addressing the actual argument presented.